I'm a real life example of the destructive effects of antibiotic resistance. So my otherwise completely healthy and beautiful one and a half year old son, Simon, died suddenly uh, in 2004. And at the time of his death, nobody knew what caused his death. Antibiotic resistance, simply put, is when drugs stop working. When the antibiotics we take to fight infection no longer work because the bacteria causing the infection becomes resistant to the drugs. Resistance to antibiotics is, is a growing problem and it's actually considered by the World Health Organization to be the most prevalent or most dangerous healthcare issue in the world right now. And at the time of his death, nobody knew what caused his death. So we had agreed to an autopsy, and um, when the autopsy results came back, uh, the infectious disease doctors told us that Simon had contracted an antibiotic-resistant bacterium, um, and it was a superbug, it was a new strain. So what it was, was MRSA, M-R-S-A, or methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, a new strain, a community-associated strain. It was very fast. Um, we woke up on a Friday morning and he wasn't feeling well. And from that moment, um, going back and forth to the hospital, it, uh, he, he died that night. So it was less than 24 hours. One of the key things that's made it go out of control is that if someone has a fever, if they go to the doctor, they expect to get medicated for it. They expect an antibiotic, even though as much as half the time they shouldn't be taking an antibiotic because it won't have any effect. Antibiotics won't work against a viral infection like the flu. Diagnostic testing plays a central role in combating antimicrobial or antibiotic resistance. First, if you're in a doctor's office, the doctor can do a rapid influenza test to determine whether you have a viral infection, influenza, in which case you should not be getting an antibiotic. In hospitals, diagnostic tests can tell you precisely what's causing the infection and what treatments will work. There's a test that measures a, a human protein that the human body creates in the presence of a bacterial infection. It's called PCT, procalcitonin, and it's a very established test now in the, in the US. If that value is, is, is very high, then the physician knows that there's some infection, some bacterial infection going on in that patient and that they need uh, fast antibiotic treatment. As a patient, I think it's important to be aware that there are rapid diagnostic methods around. This is an issue both for individual patients and for the world, because if antibiotics are not used properly, it can not only cause an individual to end up with something much worse than that than what originally infected them, it also causes this massive human health threat for the world. So I have a doctorate in public health from Harvard. Here I am, an incredibly highly educated person in the field of public health. I had no idea what they were talking about. I may have heard of antibiotic resistance, but I wasn't really aware of how critical the situation is, uh, was and is. If we don't save antibiotics, uh, what happened to me and my own child will undoubtedly happen to other families. Together uh, really is the only way that we're going to reverse this antibiotic resistance trend. So when you go to the doctor, you know, you know we all need to think about whether we really need that antibiotic because the more we use them, the less effective they're going to become. And if we continue using them the way we are, uh, we're not gonna have any antibiotics left.